Hello, world. This is the Gadget Flow Podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to sit down with Roy Morjohn, and Roy is a total beast entrepreneur who has helped facilitate some of the biggest crowdfunding projects to date, along with helping entrepreneurs bring their products to market, which we've all had challenges with in the past. We had a great conversation full of valuable insight, and I think you're gonna get a ton out of it. So I won't keep you any longer. Here is my interview with Roy Morjohn. All right, I am here with Roy Morjon. Roy, how you doing, man? Doing well. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. We are stoked, like super stoked, to have you on the Gadget Flow podcast this week. So maybe for people who don't know who you are or what it is you do, could you just like briefly explain like a, a quick snapshot of of yeah who you are and what you do? Yeah, so uh, I guess I'm a classified now as a serial entrepreneur, uh, thought leader in digital marketing. I've been doing this for over... 25 years now. Um, you know, I consulted for companies, big companies like AOL and Microsoft in my teens. Uh, and now I've been helping out startups and entrepreneurs, uh, basically with a one-stop solution for their go-to-market product launch needs. Um, you know, for the last seven, going on eight years now, I've run, uh, a crowdfunding marketing agency, if you will. Last year, we merged with a product development firm to form the industry's only vertically integrated product development company that also specializes in crowdfunding and launching products out there. Um, so we can basically take the idea on a napkin, do the initial prototyping or product development for it, run the crowdfunding campaign, raise them millions of dollars, and then take that product and actually manufacture it for them, ship and deliver, and then hand them potentially off to, to retailers or whatever they want to do long-term in terms of their marketing. Man, that really is a one-stop shot, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, you know, idea, ideas dream, you know, because we, there are so many entrepreneurs who listen to this show and all that. And, you know, so many ideas floating around, but we always hit those roadblocks of how do we actually make this a reality? So that's super cool that you guys are providing that solution. So I kind of want to get a little bit practical. I like asking practical questions because that's usually what's helpful to the people who are, you know, wanting to start their new business or they want to, you know, launch a product or whatever. So maybe let's start with like what you think are a few of the best practices or tricks you've learned, tips you have um, for marketing products and, and crowdfunding. Uh, you know, the, the beauty of crowdfunding now is that there's a ton of data out there. Uh, and being a data junkie myself and an analytics guy, you know, you can look at all of the previous campaigns and products and everything else that's run and do your research on them. You know, before when we first started seven or eight years ago, there was no campaigns to be run. There was barely a million people that had backed a crowdfunding campaign and data was sparse and sporadic and we kind of had to pave the way for it. Um, so the, the biggest thing that I tell any entrepreneur is, you know, do your research realize if this is something that's actually for you, you know, whether entrepreneurship is, is something that's in your blood or it's just something that it's a passion project for you and maybe just a hobby. Um, outside of, you know, doing your research, you know, actually make sure that your product is an idea that people really do have a problem that you're solving uh, and make sure that that market is potentially big enough. Because uh, I've seen it, you know, all too many times where, a lot of people come to us every day. You know, we get hundreds of inventions every single day submitted through our website. And just a lot of them aren't necessarily fleshed out or good ideas or maybe already somebody's already brought something to market like that and they just haven't done their research. Um, and, right. You know, really trying to find out if there is a true need out, outside of your friends and family who are always going to tell you, yeah, it's the greatest thing. I'll totally buy one. Um, but they may be the only people that are going to purchase your product and continue to pat you on your back. <laughs> Um, you know, crowdfunding is the truest yeah. litmus test of whether a product is truly needed in the market. Uh, and that's why we love it where, you know, you can fail fast and fail upwards, if you will, where you throw your product out there and get feedback and the crowd will tell you whether or not it's, you know, something they want, if the price works, if the design is something that, you know, is aesthetically pleasing to them. Um, so, you know, those are a couple of things that we always, you know, try and tell entrepreneurs to go down the path of do your research and find out if it's something that truly is needed in the market. Right. So can you give a couple examples, like maybe even just one example that stands out to you as like one of your guys's, 
you know, like uh, biggest hits, if you will? Like what's a product or or campaign you launched that you, you really saw like the most impact happen and like the most uh, results that really, uh, yeah. Like what's a good example of a, of a product you've worked on like that? So we've been fortunate to work with about $28 million campaigns now. Um, and, you know, out of those, wow. there's always, you know, really unique stories that kind of unfold within them or paths that campaigns take. Uh, our, one of our most recent multi-million dollar campaigns was for a product called Antonia St. New York. Uh, and what was unique about this product was it was a high heel shoe that fit like a, you know, a running shoe, basically. And you're like, you know, Roy, you crowdfunded some high heel shoes. That must have been tough. Uh, yeah, it was extremely <laughs> tough. Uh, and not only, you know, again, because we kind of, you know, see the demographics of, you know, Kickstarter, for instance, being more of a male laden, you know, platform in terms of the amount of backers that come through it. Um, but we were able to raise just on Kickstarter alone, 1.8, over $1.8 million for a pair of high heel shoes. And what was unique wow. about this campaign was not only the the targeting that we did, but also working with our agency partners at Facebook directly in terms of finding different groups to target uh, within our campaign. Now, certainly we're hitting, you know, all of the, you know, work that we had done previously, all of the other female fashion products that we've done over the last seven or eight years. So we can, you know, we have a good idea of where the women are hanging out and talking about fashion and looking to back products like this. But I mean, you know, given this is the most funded female product or fashion product ever, there was a lot of different places that we had to find out. Uh, and come to find out, you know, through our targeting, we were able to actually target um, the transgender community, um, which this shoe met, you know, their passion or their need to have a shoe in a larger size that fit them. Uh, and that, you know, completely opened up doors that we had no idea were even you know, available to be opened or put a key in and, you know, kind of see what was on the other side. But that, you know, really blew up the campaign where, you know, I think that grouping alone brought in, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into the campaign that we never would have known without, you know, our dedicated Facebook ad experts and our team at Facebook to help us guide us, you know, through the campaign to make sure it was an ultimate success for our client and for us on the end. Uh, and just recently, we actually just got that campaign, um, published as a case study on Facebook's success stories pages. Wow. That is fascinating, man. You found like a whole new uh, like market that we were not expecting to find through that. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's kind of a good transition um, because I really want to ask like, what is, what is working right now when it comes to like social channels and marketing products? Is fa are, are Facebook ads kind of like the end all be all? Is that the big thing currently? Um, or, or what, what's going on there that you see? Well, there's a lot of stuff going on on Facebook right now, unfortunately. Um, but you know, Facebook wow. has, <laughs> yeah, a lot going on at Facebook right now. Um, a lot of our dedicated paid media spend is solely dedicated towards Facebook ad spend. Um, it's, it's a mix right now. I'd probably say 75% of our total, you know, millions and millions of dollars of budget that we spend every month, uh, goes towards Facebook and the rest typically towards Google and the, the Google network, display network, YouTube, et cetera. Uh, and then, you know, remarketing through both of those channels. Um, but we've tested, you know, Twitter, we've tested Pinterest, we've tested you, Tabula and the Outbrains and all of these other places. And nothing really converts as well as those two platforms, you know, Google and Facebook alone. Um, so that's why mm -hmm. we continue to pump more dedicated resources into them. And just the, the targeting simply is, you know, phenomenal for us as advertisers nowadays to really pinpoint and focus in on our true demographic and what they look like. Right. That uh, makes a lot of sense, man. So I think a lot of our listeners are aspiring entrepreneurs and creators. And that kind of, uh, I'm just wondering, you know, because you said you guys got started about seven or eight years ago. And I just wanted to ask kind of what, what has it been like to start the company and then get it to where it is today? Like what's, what is the, what have been some of like the greatest challenges and some of the greatest successes of, of getting to where you are now? Well, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. Uh, it is not a straight path to success. It's more of a roller coaster that you can never get off of unless, you know, you, you really want to jump off uh, in the middle uh -huh. of the, uh, the, the apex potentially. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it really isn't for everyone. It, it takes uh, 
there is no work life balance when you're an entrepreneur, unfortunately. Uh, and you know, it's great that I have a, uh, a wife who understands that, uh, but it's taken a few years, unfortunately, but you know, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's been a struggle, you know, I mean, um, I originally started my, my second agency before, uh, selling my first agency and it was just truly a digital marketing agency, a, a run of the mill, you know, with obviously, you know, smart and talented people there, but there was a lot of competition. Uh, and we were very fortunate that we ranked on the first page of Google for startup marketing and a company, you know, hit us up and filled out our contact form saying, Hey, we've got this cool product on Kickstarter, but we need some PR help. Can you, can you assist us? Uh, and we were like, what's Kickstarter? Uh, so we dove into it and, you know, fortunately we were like, yeah, let's, let's help you out. And we did a PR campaign for them. They only had two weeks left in their campaign, but we ended up doubling their funding. Um, you know, I think we raised about another $50,000 for them in two weeks. And we're like, oh, this is awesome. We can move the needle really quickly for startups. Um, and that's where we got started, basically. Sort of like we dove in, we started looking at other cool tech products that were on Kickstarter at the time and reaching out to them and helping one or two more projects a week out now. And, you know, at this point, we've, you know, we're help, we've helped out over 600 campaigns now uh, from start to finish. We've raised over $150 million for our clients just through Kickstarter and Indiegogo alone over the past six, seven plus years. So it's been really interesting, the, the transition um, from a pure digital marketing agency to a, you know, full service crowdfunding marketing agency that now also does product development and turnkey product launch for people's ideas and innovations. Right. So in all of that, like what does your day-to-day role look like? I'm just curious because you guys do so many things. What, like on a day-to-day basis, are you more hands-on and like, you know, refining a product development idea? Are you more hands-on in another way? Like what is your day-to-day role look like? Yeah, my passion is marketing. So that's where I do my day to day. Uh, Really, it's marketing for Inventus partners, figuring out, you know, where we need to be one year, three year, five, 10 years down the road, and strategic partnerships, like with the gadget flow, and you know, other partnerships that we have, like with our platform providers, you know, being agencies, you know, um, top agencies for both Kickstarter and Indiegogo, or an expert on Kickstarter experts like gadget flow, and really, you know, solidifying partnerships and where we can be and where we can continue to grow. Um, you know, we're still one of the fastest growing companies in, in Charlotte for, you know, multiple years now. And that's just been, you know, all on the marketing side in terms of the fastest growing. I think right now our, our Facebook team tells us that we have the largest Facebook advertising group out of anyone in the Southeast. So I've got 10 dedicated people solely running Facebook ads, you know, every single day for our clients. So that's really where I spend a lot of my time with my management staff on the marketing side. And then doing more of the processes and uh, partnership side uh, with our with our agency. Man, some of those numbers are just incredible. Like I can't believe how far the industry's come and stuff. And you guys are definitely at the forefront of all of that. I mean, it's just amazing hearing hearing what you guys have done and accomplished in in the last eight years or so. So I mean, I'm kind of thinking like I can't get the you know the 19, 20 year olds aspiring entrepreneur out of my head and I'm and I'm wondering like is there any piece of advice anything you could give them that would kind of you know help them anything you've learned throughout the years like what's some advice you could give people out there who are who are looking to start something or to launch something go and find a mentor or someone that's done it before in the industry that you're passionate about and you know I think nowadays people have the, the m- best opportunity to do something they're passionate about and not go and work for corporate America and just sit in a cubicle all day and collect a check and be bored out of your mind and not have any passion in your life with what you're doing. Uh, nowadays, you can create the job. I mean, we're actually creating new job titles every single week because our agency is continuing to grow and take different paths with crowdfunding as the the pinnacle of you know what we're doing. You know, these job roles don't exist. So we're hiring people like we have, you know, 10 to 20 applicants a day coming to us saying, yeah, I want to do that job. And they, the job has never existed before. So like you didn't even know what you're signing up for, which is fun and <laughs> exciting to see. You know, they're just like, yeah, I want to be a part of that startup. I want to be a part of what you guys are doing because it's so fun. And, you know, you guys are so passionate about helping entrepreneurs bring products to life and, you know, bringing, you know, these are people's babies, right? These are their, their beautiful babies right. that they have all of the passion in the world for and they want to share it with everyone 
with everyone else in the world. And we're fortunate enough that we get to, you know, sit on the sidelines and really help bring that product to fruition and help them with their marketing and their messaging and their video and their advertising and finding their audience and letting them have conversation with their customers. So it's, it's really fun. You know, when we're doing this, you know, 40 or 50 campaigns a month, helping all of these entrepreneurs out and bring their products to life. So back to your original question, uh, you know, find a mentor or someone else that's done it before in that industry and just work for them for free. You know, you have an opportunity to learn from them. Don't think about collecting a paycheck because the education that you will get from them uh, will be 10 or 100 fold in the future of just sitting there listening to them on phone calls or seeing how they work in business meetings. Those kind of you know things you're not going to learn in college, uh, unfortunately, this you know today's day and age of college and what it is. Um, so whether it's like an apprenticeship, I kind of keep going back to where I think you really need to have a specialized skill. Uh, in this workforce, because a lot of it's going to be replaced by whether it be blockchain or AI or a combination of the two uh, with robotics, uh, a lot of jobs are going to be replaced by robots. So having a specialized skill is going to be certainly important in the future where you can't be replaced. Yeah, I think that's great advice, man. I, I'm curious, do you have a, have you had a mentor in the past or any stories about, uh, like from that experience on a personal note? Yeah, I mean, I, I've got uh, a, a couple. There's there's one in particular here in Charlotte um, that's kind of you know been down the startup path multiple times. You know, started companies, sold companies multiple times. Uh, so I kind of mm-hmm. lean on him um, when I have you know questions because he's done it before and has been down that path. But you know, obviously, no one as specific with crowdfunding. Um, there's a few people like in the digital agency realm that own other agencies that I you know ask questions about or how's it going those kind of things where we we have like you know quarterly check-ins if you will uh and then i'm part of a a mastermind group of just the most the top performing entrepreneurs in the world and that's really where i have a chance to kind of sit and debrief and you know ask those kind of questions and listen to other entrepreneurs and what their pain points are and that's been extremely helpful over the past few years yeah yeah I mean, you guys are still kind of in the, uh, the wild west of the crowdfunding world, you know, so it's hard to have, uh, mentors because you're paving the way, you know, <laughs> and right yeah, now it's, it's nobody, still brand new. Exactly. Nobody wrote our book, right? We have to write it every single day. It's a new page. So you never know what's going to happen or what, you know, cool innovation is going to come through your inbox. Uh, and that's, what's really exciting about our job and, you know, all the employees that I have. Yeah, definitely, man. Okay, I have one final question for you, and that is, what are you most excited about moving into the future? I just, I, I truly love helping entrepreneurs and startups bring their babies, bring their best ideas to life, because uh, a lot of mm-hmm. them are tinkerers or makers, and they're really good at hardware or product or fashion or textiles or whatever it may be, and they just don't know how to do the marketing and the messaging and the creative and all of that. And we get to do that every single day and really, you know, pinpoint what it is they're trying to make and who their potential customer is. And, you know, I'm so fortunate to have such an expert team on my side, you know, really handle all of that and walk clients through that all the way through from ideation to marketing and messaging to, you know, actually finding their customers and bringing them into a campaign and building their base of brand evangelists that they can always tap into for new product ideas or innovation or feedback. Um, So that's what I'm really excited about. I mean, crowdfunding itself is so young. You know, we're only a few years in. I don't even think it's 10 years old yet. Um, You know, and Kickstarter has only had 15 million backers now in all. So that's really the, the, the universe we're playing in is so small. And there's so few people that have actually backed something. But we've had so many million dollar campaigns that it's, you know, hard to slow it down, if you will. I mean, crowdfunding continues to double in size every single year. And I I don't see that stopping. I don't think innovation is going to stop. I think more and more enterprise type companies are entering crowdfunding as a means to test products before they spend millions in product development. Um, So we're fortunate now that we're working with some really big companies like General Electric and the NFL that have these product ideas that they want to test before they actually spend tens of millions on development and see if it's something that actually consumers don't even want. Right. Right. Man, man, that is cool. I'm excited, excited to see uh, uh, projects, projects come to awesome, man. Absolutely. They'll be on Gadget Flow, so don't worry. 
All right, cool, man. So where can people find you online or, or where would you like to direct people to check out what you guys are up to and, and how to how to connect with you? Yeah, so personally, you can just find me anywhere. I think I've got my handle secured on everything. It's just Roy Morjohn, M-O-R-E-J-O-N. Uh, my company is Inventus Partners, E-N-V-E-N-T-Y-S, partners.com. Uh, you can find us anywhere there. Um, other than that, I have my own podcast that I have every week and gadget flow is fortunately a sponsor of that at artofthekickstart.com. So any of those places you can find us or what we're doing and all of the case studies of the cool products that we're working with. Dude, Roy, thank you so much for being on. We are going to put all that info into the show notes so people can connect with you, check out everything you guys are up to. And I think today's episode is awesome. And I really appreciate your time, man. I think you gave a lot of valuable insight and a lot of helpful uh, helpful info for people to check out. So Roy, thank you so much for being on the show today, man. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm here to help. So thank you. That was my interview with Roy Morjohn. And as you heard, he has a ton of awesome stuff in the works. So please make sure to check out all the links to everything he's up to in the show notes of today's episode. This podcast is made by Gadget Flow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to check out our site for all the new products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode. So in the meantime, please, please go rate and review our show on iTunes. That helps us so much. So thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow podcast, and we will see you next week.